In this video, we're going to take a look at secondary cells. Uh, but in order to do that, we first need to kind of talk about what a battery is because secondary cells are a type of battery. So just to kind of start out with and refresh our memory, a battery is a series of two or more electrochemical cells. So these are also primary cells. Uh, typical batteries are enclosed in a single container, so if you think about your typical battery that you would stick in your electronics, it's enclosed within that container, and the reaction materials are eventually consumed in the battery itself, and that, so that means that the reaction is not reversible. So that means eventually your batteries no longer work, you have to throw them out and you have to replace them. And typically what's happening there is either the anode, the electrolyte, or both would need to be replaced or the, or the battery has to get thrown away. Uh, typically the anode, which is our negative electrode, is oxidized and can no longer be used. So that's typically what happens with a battery. Um, furthermore, also ions that are traveling through the solution and salt bridge can polarize a cell, which can ca also cause the chemical reactions to stop. Um, polarization can also cause a buildup of hydrogen bubbles uh, on the surface of the anode, and, and that can also lead to an increase in resistance of the cell and reduce its electrical output. So lots of things can go uh, not necessarily wrong, but can happen that make your batteries stop working. So that means primary cells are really good for low current demands only. They don't really work well for high current demands like flash photography or electric cars. And so we need something different in order to work with those things. So that brings us to secondary cells. Secondary cells are great because they are rechargeable. That means what we can do is we can use the energy produced by spontaneous chemical reactions to generate electrical energy. And then those reactions can be reversed by applying an electric current to the cell. And so what we're getting here is you can satisfy that higher current demand over primary cells um, but it's important to note that because of that, they have a higher rate of, of self-discharge. So when we're talking about the spontaneous chemical reaction, we're talking about discharge. So going from anode to cathode uh, direction here. Um, that is our spontaneous reaction. To charge or recharge the battery, we're going with the reverse reaction. So we're going cathode to anode. This is a non-spontaneous reaction, so electric current needs to be applied in order to drive the reaction in this particular direction. So typically in these cells we have anode cathode. We usually have some sort of separator electrolyte that allows the ions to pass through freely between uh, both sides. So let's take a look at a couple of specific examples of secondary cells to see how they work. The first example is the lead acid battery. So this is your typical car battery. And what happens here is electrical energy from the battery is used to start the engine and power any electrical systems in the car. And then chemical energy from combustion in the engine is used to recharge the battery. So you're getting both the discharge and the charging reactions happening within this type of secondary cell. Um, some other things to point out here, the anode is typically lead and the cathode is, um, it says lead to lead dioxide here. So this is our cathode, uh, better known as lead four oxide and that's our cathode. And then the um, electrolyte is our sulfuric acid. Okay, so those are all the different sort of components. You can see there are multiple uh, cells within here. So um, we have more than one type of electrolytic, or sorry, electrochemical cell within this uh, particular car battery. 
So what's happening then in terms of the reactions? Well, if we looked at the discharge reactions, so these are our spontaneous reactions. At the anode, we'd have oxidation, and that's our lead with HSO4 minus reacting to give lead uh, to sulfate, H plus, and two electrons. Our cathode is where reduction's happening, and we're getting this reaction here where we have PbO2, 3H plus, HSO4, two electrons, makes PbSO4 and water. So if we were to add both of those reactions together, that gives us an overall reaction where our lead, our lead for oxide, and our sulfuric acid are reacting to give us lead to sulfate and water. Now, in terms of coming up with the charging reactions for the lead acid battery, basically, they're all the same reactions. They're just reversed. So at the anode, we still have the same thing there. So we still have lead there, but instead going uh, lead, HSO4 makes PBSO4, so on, it would re be reversed. So it's PBSO4 plus H plus plus two electrons makes uh, PB and H SO4 negative, okay? Um, in terms of the cathode, so same kind of deal, but we're flipping around the reaction. So we'd have PBSO4, two waters. That's going to create PBO2, three H pluses, and HSO4 minus. So overall, our reaction would be the reverse of what we've got here. So overall, for the charging reaction, we have two PBSO4, we have two waters, and that's going to create PB, uh, PBO2, and two H2SO4s. Okay, so charging reactions are essentially just the opposite of our uh, discharge reactions with the same thing happening or the same things at the anode and the cathode. Um, now, important to note, the continual charging of a lead acid battery tends to produce hydrogen and oxygen from water. So if you have a non-sealed car battery, occasionally you do have to top it up with distilled water. Kind of interesting uh, and a fun fact. The last uh, example of a secondary uh, cell that we're going to take a look at is a lithium ion battery. And so typically what happens here is we have lithium and lithium ions present and lithium atoms are embedded in a lattice of graphite um, electrodes rather than having pure lithium metal as the anode. Um, and then the cathode over here is uh, typically a lithium cobalt complex. So it's got LiMO2 there, but typically it's LiCoO2. Uh, um, in terms of the reactions that's happening, the discharge reaction is the lithium is going to lithium plus plus an electron. And then at the cathode, the lithium plus plus an electron plus this uh, COO2 is making our LiCoO2. Um, so overall we get this reaction happening here and so our discharge is going in this direction. So this would be our just discharge reaction. Now in terms of the charging reactions, the opposite's happening. So we have the same things at the anode and cathode but the reactions are flipped around in order to create that charging reaction. Now, really important to note, the battery medium, medium here must be completely non-aqueous. So it uses uh, usually some kind of polymer gel because lithium, as we know, will react really vigorously with water. Um, and that would not be good for our lithium ion battery. So those are secondary cells. We got two examples, lead acid battery and a lithium ion battery. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.